think that's what he meant. I always think of it as a gift to other people. Hey, everybody. We're back here uh, with John Lithgow. John, have you done much Shakespeare? I certainly did when I was young, because my father was a Shakespeare producer. Yeah, oh, he so that's created... how you came by it. Yeah. Because uh, I was wondering, one of my questions was, here, here you are. This is, this is young John Lithgow in kindergarten. Yeah. And I was going to ask, how did this guy become that guy? Uh, Other than through entropy. Age does... <laughs> age performs miracles. Actually, yes. I, I had already had my first performance before that was taken. What was it? I was one of Nora's children in a doll's house oh. when I was about two years old. My father, in fact, played my own father. And I don't remember a single thing about the experience, but I'm told I was very good. <laughs> so that was, I was off to a When did you time. realize you liked it? I think it, I, I was a big campus star at college. And I think I, there was one particular number in a Gilbert and Sullivan opera where I stopped the show and the audience would not stop applauding. They, they simply wouldn't let the show go on. Literally, what, was the, what was the show? Utopia Limited. I don't know that by one. By Gilbert and Sullivan, their least known operetta. And I stood there just like looking at them and saying, when are you going to stop? <laughs> and they didn't stop. And I thought, I'm going to become an actor. You know, I mean, it just doesn't get better. Very few jobs involve people clapping for you for extended periods of time. Exactly. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> oh, please. 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 <laughs> John, let's go, everybody. John, John, thank you. When are you going to stop? Thank you. I'm with will them. You, I'm will, with you them. Go, will you go with me everywhere, John Lithgow? Um, what do you think makes for a good performer? What do you give to your actors as you direct to them? How do you pull that out of them? Well, this has been a very interesting experience, which we will talk about. But uh, Doug McGrath is more a writer than an actor. So in many cases, I was just helping him with very rudimentary ideas that he was so responsive to, like always let them see your th what you're thinking. Like, if, if, if you're talking about one thing and soon you will go on to talk about a cup of coffee, look at that coffee and then go to the coffee. Let them see you think of it. Something as simple as that. Mm -hmm. uh, it's actually a wonderful process to go through. Uh, I don't want to oversell it. Go ahead. But this... <laughs> This Greatest show, play ever written. This show is a gem. It's a piece of ch chamber theater. Doug is an urbane and witty New Yorker, but he grew up in Midland, Texas. And he tells a story from his 14th year in eighth grade, mm -hmm. a formative story in his life. The, the story is about Texas and his family, but mainly it's about a very crazy and complicated entanglement with a, an eighth grade history teacher. We've been doing it in previews for two weeks, and people are loving th this show. You and Evie have got to go down to the DR2 theater, and, and I include all of you in this. <laughs> it's, it's a, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a little 99-seat theater. Uh, it, it opens in two days. When people find out about this, it's going to be impossible get to get in. So get your tickets, act now, and, and don't tell anybody about it. That's how I've chosen to sell it. Fair enough. Fair enough. Play hard to get. <laughs> John, it was lovely to see you. <laughs> tickets to Everything's Fine are available at everythingsfineplay.com. John Lithgow, everybody. We'll be right back with Tony.